Womanthology is an idea that became a, uh, I would say it's an idea raised to address a common complaint that women can't get their work looked at. It became a Kickstarter phenomenon, raising funds to publish a book where all the contributors were doing their work for charity, so we all did our work for free. We have contributors from all over the globe, and the only thing they all have in common is uh, two X chromosomes. <laughs> this is started by, where's my slide person? Woohoo! Hello! Yay! This is started by Renee Deliz who responded to a, um, is it Jessica Hickman? I'm so sorry, I'm blanking on the name. They kind of said, well, she put out a tweet saying, if I did an anthology of all women creators, would people participate? And a whole lot of people, <laughs> including all of these, said, heck yeah. <laughs> so we all have our own backgrounds and stories. Renee and her crew did a good job partnering pros with new, newcomers so that all sorts of people had representation in a form that made them feel like, you know, they had willingness to participate and people were going to enjoy their participation. <coughs> the book came out earlier this year from IDW, is still available for sale, and we will be doing a signing there at the IDW booth tomorrow morning at 10. We have a selection of the many over 150 participants who worked on Womanthology here. Now I'm going to start from the far end and I can't see all of you in order. <laughs> so I want to have you each give your name and the name of the, your page number and the story, the name of the story that you did. Now if you don't remember your page number, that's okay, we'll gloss over that part. <laughs> Uh, my name is Cassandra James. I don't know what page number it was. It's kind of near the back. Um, I illustrated a story written by... Um, I'm from Australia, and I illustrated a story written by a fellow Australian um, called SJ... Uh, her name's SJ Williams. And um, it's a four-page story, and it's... I don't know, I guess it's a story about um, decisions, I guess. It's just <laughs> doing the right thing. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. Um, I'm Jolene Hauser. I did a story called You Will Know Them by the Rake of Their Hats. I forgot who wrote it. Uh, it's page number 166. Um, are we supposed to say something else? <laughs> Was that it? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jody Hauser, no relation. Uh, I wrote a story called Everwell. It's on page 96, and the art is by Fiona Staples and Adriana Blake. Hi, I'm Jean Kang. I am an artist, and my, pa my story is on page 90. It is written by Gail Simone, and it's called In Every Heart, a Masterwork. Hey, uh, I'm Kelly Turnbull. Um, my, I was the artist for my story. It's on page 174, I think. Uh, it was written by Talisha Harrison. Um. All right, my turn then. <laughs> my name's Ma'at Crook. I am the writer on page 128. The story is called Greatest of Ease, and the artist that did it is Blue De La Quanti. I'm Trina Robbins, and I can't believe that everyone here knows their page number. <laughs> we were writing it on the, uh, the things we were I signing. <laughs> I don't know my page number, but I did a story called How It Really Happened. My artist was Karen Ellis, who I believe lives in Australia, or else England. Um, and our heroine, our heroine was a woman named Octobriana, who was a very interesting story about her, which I, obviously we don't have the time to get into, but she is a public domain heroine created by an East German um, man back in the 60s, and if anybody wants to stop me later, I'll tell them the whole story of Octobriana. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anya Martin. I'm the author of A Stuffed Bunny in Doll Land on page 46. And my artist is Mado Pena, who's here in the front row. <laughs> anyway, um, these are the stars actually of our story, <laughs> Money and Elephant, uh, who are my oldest stuffed animals, whom I put into a very, very dark doll land because you know dolls can't be trusted and stuffed animals <laughs> are the real heroes. If you're one of those kind of little girls, if you are one of those, then you'll love my story. <laughs> and Mato's illustrations. And I'm Barbara Randall Kiesel, and I wrote the story Glimmer Suit, uh, illustrated by Cat Stags, page 
232. Uh, one more name that I didn't mention, Laura Morley was our, our lead coordinator on this project and is, has anybody heard if she, what her due date is? She was busy gestating at, at, at a convention earlier this year. <laughs> I think she was 20 weeks in March, so yeah. someone do math. <laughs> yeah, we're artists and writers. We don't do math. There's someone that's not now. I do. Yep, five months. <laughs> also, in case you read the program book, <laughs> Bonnie Burton and Mariah Huner could not join us today. When you have this many people trying to coordinate from so many parts of the world, we lose a few along the way. <laughs> but we hope we have a good representative sample for you. We will. I'm going to throw a few questions to my participants there, and then we'll have questions from the audience. So if there's anything you're dying to know, just save it up for a while. So as I said, we had the project that started out as a Kickstarter phenomenon. I don't know where its ranking is now, but at the time that was funded for 109,000 of the 25,000 they were trying to raise, it was the fifth largest uh, comics Kickstarter ever. But it just shows to go you the important thing here is the power of one person deciding to do something because Renee is the force behind all this and she just kept pushing us all forward. Now, if you guys are not connected to her via Facebook or other me social media, you may not know that early Earlier this year, she suffered a very serious health crisis and we almost lost her. She's back at work, but if you are sitting around saying, gee, I wish I could get on someone's commission list for the future, it would be really great if you could help her out personally by, yeah, this is not a plug from her, it's a plug from me, <laughs> it, by getting on her commission list or purchasing a book directly from her at a convention because she's put her heart, her soul, and a significant number of hours into this property and I want to see her be supported in return. <laughs> See the next slide here? Oh. Here's a sampling of, this is the cover from the first Womanthology project, Womanthology Subtitle Heroic, the big hardcover book that many of you see me, that uh, Jean can uh, model for us here right now. <laughs> Pick up the, the cover is made up of pieces of the contributions of all the people who had work on the inside. And then this is a sampling of the interior pages. Pages went from pinups to five-page stories, depending on who, what, when, where, why, and what there was space for. But all of them represented something close to the hearts of the contributors involved. Okay. Womanthology is not the end, though. The follow-up is a Womanthology subtitle space coming out from IDW as a five-issue miniseries, which will then be collected into softcover books. And because I thought our editor would be here, I have to say I didn't pull down the listing of the people that are in the first issue, so if any of you are, please speak up. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. I'm not, we're not in the, I'm not in the first issue, but I'm in the second issue, and I'm doing a story that's, be, that's written by Joelle Solner, who's sitting right there in the audience. Cool. Yay! And this is a sneak peek at the interior, some of the interior art from Womanthology Space, which will be out in, did we get a date yet? No. I don't think that's a final date yet. I'm not sure. Yeah. Someday that's not now. <laughs> Someday soon, hopefully. I'm in book four, by the way, so I guess you have to wait a while to see my And I'm pages. also in the fourth issue. Oh, yeah. congratulations, you two. But Womanthology has become more than just a Kickstarter, more than just a book. It's become this social phenomenon connecting women from all over the world who are interested in comics and interested in participating in comics and creating their own. There's a forum on the digital webbing site, and you can see Womanthology links on Twitter and, and uh, Twitter and Facebook and DeviantArt and one that I should remember that I'm not remembering. There's, Blogspot? Uh, there's Tumblr as well. Yes. <laughs> It has gotten so many girls to think about themselves as someone who can do comics too, because quite often girls fall into the trap of enjoying the comics, but not identifying themselves as a possible participant. Me, I think everybody ought to be doing comics in some form and using, you know, enjoying this meeting and using it as a way to communicate with other people. But this has become something big and social and fun that is connecting us all. Excuse me. Starting from the very end, I'm going to toss this question at each of you guys. What attracted you to this project? When you saw the initial tweet or, or had it forwarded to you, what made you think, I want to work on this, I want to help this out? Uh, probably because, well, I've known Renee for a few years and was a real fan of her work and I thought, well, any project that she's putting together is worth, you know, being involved in, but especially because it was going to be all uh, women creators and that is just so rare 
But, you know, I just thought, wow, I have to be a part of this. Like, we really have to, like, encourage women to make comics. And if we can make a book, like, all by women, then hopefully other women will see it and go, hey, I can do comics too. So, yeah, I think it was, like, an inspirational thing. Like, I wanted to create something or be a part of something that people could look at and realise that they could do it too. <laughs> I was trying to remember the question. <laughs> Why did you want to be involved? Um, I just had a feeling it'd be pretty cool. <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is pretty cool. She's really not awesome. If you guys had a chance to meet her, she's so cool. <laughs> and her artwork's all amazing. So yeah, I'm like yay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, well, I actually found out about womanthology from an editor of another anthology I was working on, and so part of it was I wanted to do more anthology stories, because it's fun for me at least to do the shorter form stories, because um, there's a, not a lot of mediums where you can sort of do at something that's so small and tight and still a complete story. But um, I also work for a charity for my day job, so the fact that the book was for charity was a huge thing for me, because I know a lot of charities have really been struggling since the economy went bad. Um, so just an opportunity to do something I love and that would actually help people. I mean, how often does that come along? <laughs> I really wanted to do more work in comics. I've been working in animation and out of animation and games and stuff for a while, and I really love storytelling. And I've drawn a lot of my own comics and you know did them for myself and sold them at conventions, but I really wanted to do something as part of a group. And I was interested and curious in what it's like to work with um, a person that I didn't know. Like uh, I've worked with another writer before who was a good friend of mine. But I, it's, I don't know how to work collaboratively with other people that I didn't know before. So this was a really cool experience in general. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to come clean and say that I joined with the intent to just do like a beefy fan service, like sexy dudes comic in the middle of the book, because I thought it would be funny if there were just a bunch of sexy dudes in the middle of a mythology. And it's like, what, you know, what woman, oh, sorry, moving away from the mic. Yeah, what, what woman doesn't want sexy dudes in her, her book? I mean, I got, I unless you don't really like sexy dudes, but, you I know. still want that comic. <laughs> yeah. Look for it in Womanthology, Sexy Dudes Edition. <laughs> Um, girls would be, drawn guys. Wouldn't that be the whoa man anthology? <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I ended up, uh, so it wasn't my intent originally to uh, to get paired up with a writer, but when they were saying like, okay, we've got like so many artists, we need some of you to like go with writers and that, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll put, you know, my name in because, you know, like get the experience of working with someone else. And when I saw the, the story that Talisha wrote, like you could tell that it was something very important and very personal to her. And it was her first try at um, writing a comic for from what I understand, so it was like definitely like she was excited to like you know have somebody to like bring her stuff to life. So I was like, all right, my sexy dudes can wait. And, uh... They could be sexy dudes in space. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I actually saw the tweet on my birthday, and during all of May, I have a self-care month, where every day I do something special for myself. And when I saw that tweet, um, I thought about how I've been writing and storytelling ever since I was a little kid, um, even drawing, but I kind of let the drawing you know, fall by the wayside, but I had continued to write and had actually been writing stuff in script and comic book script format, um, but never had anything published, never even put anything in. And then when I saw that tweet, I was all, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And sent in my idea, got accepted, and here we are. Here we are. An all-woman comics anthology. How could I not want to take part in it? I've always wanted to have a creative career, and I had gone off on another tangent, becoming a healthcare and business writer from like the Wall Street Journal and MarketWatch.com, and wasn't really happy doing that. So I was trying to find a way to transition back into being creative and was thinking of myself as a prose fiction writer when I found out about Womanthology and I had actually worked in the comics industry on the PR side and done a little bit of writing uh, previously, but, but some years ago. So when I heard about this, I thought, why not? I will just send Renee an email and see if she'll accept me. And she did. And it's just been a fantastic experience. I, I just... I, uh, 
I don't know, I, I went to Smith College too, so I guess I'm a little bit for women's empowerment to begin with, <laughs> having had that experience. I wrote Renee's first mainstream comics project called Rogue Angel, Teller of Tall Tales from IDW, and I've been trying to find ways to work with her ever since. So if Renee had sent out a message saying, I'm working on Lazy Sweet Potato Comics, I would have been there. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Have you, going on to the social side of womanthology, have any of you made new friendships via the social network of this? Well, Kelly and I have worked together in, <laughs> on an anime project before, so we knew each other for a while, but when we, I found out she was on it, I was like, awesome, because <laughs> Kelly's comics are amazing. <laughs> and she, is, uh, she has a great webcomic called Manly Men Doing Manly Things. And Manly Guys. Manly Guys. <laughs> I appreciate you plugging me so I didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> but, oh, you're, you're a good friend. <laughs> Friendships yeah. at work. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is that um, Jody and I share a lot of mutual friends friends and um, so when we met finally it's like wait you know this person I know this person how did this happen so it's kind of the whole thing of growing up or living in the LA kind of general entertainment animation comics cluster that somehow you know the book managed to bring us all together but may but maybe we we might not have met without the yeah. book I was actually really surprised um, I got I chose a writer. Um, I saw a pitch and I thought, that is awesome. I didn't know anything about it. I'd never heard of her before. And um, we started emailing a week after I chose her for a story. And it turns out that she was a writer from Australia. And I was like, oh my God, we live in the same country. Like, what are the odds? That's awesome. And it turned out that a week after that, I was going into state for a convention and she was going to be there. So we actually met up before I started working on the project. So I just couldn't believe that. That sort of just all coincided together and we got to meet before we worked together and it was awesome. So now we're really good friends. Yeah, there's actually quite a few womanthology contributors in the Southern California area, and there's been quite a few conventions out here, too, since the book came out. And so we've all just met a lot of people, and we see them all at the panels and everything. So I think a lot of at least the people in this area have gotten to know each other pretty well. Mariah and I are working on another project, a book that she's editing um, that I'm putting together. But I'm not sure if we got together because of woman anthology or because we've really always wanted to work on a project together. <laughs> yeah, it's also interesting on how, like, the womanthology, the artists and the writers are all spread out all over the world, and even though Canada doesn't seem that far, <laughs> since it's, you know, right up north, but um, my friend Katie Shanahan also drew a story for womanthology, and I feel like the two of us, um, she and her brother have... Um, a web show, and the two of us were at C2E2 together, representing womanthology along with a couple other people, and we just we spent a long time talking about what this project meant to us as you know women artists, and it's nice to be able to share a project with a good friend. I was going to say, yeah, the biggest bond that I've had is with my artist Mado Pania, who I. I, I mean, Renee sent me a list of artists and I went and looked at the pages and everyone was spectacular, but there was something about Madhu's artwork that just called out to me and said, she's the one. So we've been exchanging emails and, and I guess very quickly we seemed like we were like best friends and then we had one little disagreement and then we were like, oh, I think both a little worried about that, but then that was fine because we, we agreed again and, and everything's been beautiful since and I just met her for the first time and and I don't know, I feel like I've got like a creative sister. It's, it's been just really awesome. And I'll also say, it is also awesome meeting the other <laughs> contributors at these conventions. I was at Heroes Con uh, in Charlotte and met a bunch of, of the other great women there as well. And I have to say, it's also awesome that my dear friend Janet Lee, who I've known for, for uh, I don't know, long, long time is also in this anthology and she, like me, is going, went through a career transition and became, and became an artist and is following her dreams and is kind of like my idol for doing that, a real inspiration to me. So. And, and besides the, the friendships, like at first I wasn't going to say anything because y'all said exactly what I would have <laughs> said, except I was thinking too that besides the friendships, as a writer and as a first time 
uh, writer getting published that sentence didn't make any sense. But you know what I mean. <laughs> um, it, um, it's really important to meet people in order to continue getting published. And, and womanthology really helped that. Uh, Trina, we were saying earlier, you were wondering earlier about page numbers. The reason I know I know my page numbers, this is my fourth womanthology panel. And the other players change out and rotate, but there's a nice commonality in that we all have this experience we enjoyed working on. You and I were both contributors to Moonstone's Chicks and Capes anthology, and I thought that was a big deal for getting a bunch of women involved. And that was, and that was 12, Chicks and Capes? Oh, yeah, Chicks and Capes. It was not a 12 of us, I think. <laughs> That was a great anthology, too. Right, but we thought that was a big deal in terms of numbers of people, and now. By the way, I just want to tell everyone, in case you're worried about me, it's an allergy. It's an allergy. <laughs> and I will be okay. She's getting better. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> Hey, Cassandra, you had to travel farther than anybody else in this panel. Yes. What's it like doing comics on your end of the world? Uh, what's it like in comics, my end of the world, was that? Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, actually. We do actually have quite a big indie comic scene in Australia. Um, I think Gasolt Publishing is like one of our biggest publishing houses. Yeah. I think they actually have a booth downstairs, so if you can get and see them, say hi. They're, uh, they're um, right across from Fourth Dimension, like the um, the the one that's selling like Lack of Daisy and yeah. there's Daughter Boy's name and all that. They're like right diagonal from there, and they yeah. are super friendly people. Uh, good friends of mine. And, yeah. uh, I, I highly encourage you to go buy all of their books. Yes. And, uh, they've got like. Nicola Scott signing there, so you can also, you know, two birds with one stone, yeah. you get her to scribble all over your stuff for you. Yep. So besides the indie stuff, we have, like, quite a few big-name artists, like you just mentioned, Nicola Scott, and um, we've got uh, Marvel's David Yarden from Australia, um, we've got Tom Taylor, writer, um, so just so many great creators that sort of travel around internationally to the conventions as well, and I'm hoping to be one of them one day. <laughs> so this is, like, a big deal for me to be here at Comic-Con. Let's see, Anya? Uh, let's see, I think that, why don't we start with you? You want to tell us each a little bit about a project you've got going on now or the one you're most proudest of? Let's just kind of do a, either a career milestone or highlight for everyone. If you, if you were pointing people towards one thing you're working on or one, things you've, one thing you've done, what would it be? Well, actually, Mato and I are developing a stuffed bunny in Doll Land now into a graphic novel project. It really always was a longer project. So when this came up, we didn't have a lot of time to come up with an idea. And I was like, can I stuff this really long, well, not really long, but, you know, a full, full novel length project into four pages? Could I do a mini story? And it was challenging to do so, but I think I got the essence of the story. But we're putting it together into a graphic novel, which we're going to start at a stuffed bunny in dollland.com and we're both pretty excited about it so watch out it, it hasn't started yet but coming soon and if you want to come by the womanthology table we'll give you a little flyer to remind you to look out for that I'm currently um, almost finished with a book for Fantagraphics. Uh, some of you may know that I'm a comics historian. I call myself a herstorian because I write about women who drew comics because the guys never write about women who drew comics. So that was great because it left a field open for me. Um, <laughs> so what I'm doing, what I've been working on is the definitive history of women cartoonists. I've done two other books. This is the definitive one, and I'm not going to have to write any more. <laughs> it's, updated. it's got lots of new information. And the last chapter is about the 21st century, because the rest of the book is 20th century. And you'll be happy to know that I ended, I ended on a very upbeat note by talking about two things, Geek Girl Con, which everyone should go to, and Woman Anthology. I'll look for it in later this year, so that that was Fantagraphics. Yeah, Fantagraphics, look for it next later this year. It's called Pretty in Ink. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am doing another anthology where I have a little bit of a longer story. Um, this is uh, the anthology is called On Nights Like This. It's written by survivors of abuse for survivors. <laughs> Um, so I wrote a story, and uh, my, my husband, Tyler Crook, is the artist on that story. 
Um, I guess it was mentioned before, but uh, probably the, the most ongoing thing that I could direct people to is uh, my webcomic, um, like Manly Guys Doing Manly Things, and it's just at manlyguys.com. I promise it's not a gay porn site. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a discussion we had about it. Somebody gave me that URL because they said that's what it sounded like. Um, but I mean, like, I, I love webcomics, and I, you know, when coming from a webcomic side to this project, like when people say, like, oh, there are no women making comics, it's like, you obviously haven't been to the internet because. <laughs> Uh, like, you know, they talk about the big names in webcomics. It's like there's Danielle Corsetto, there's, uh, you know, there's like E.K. Weaver, there's Spike. Like, Spike did her whole Smut Peddler anthology that was like super popular. Um, there's like um, Tish Doolin's modus operandi is going to be amazing when she gets it relaunched. And uh, there's just so many amazing women doing webcomics that, you know, that's like you are right at home on the indie scene if. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's... <laughs> um, I just trail off in my sentences. You <laughs> in your heads. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, the project I'm most excited about that's coming out is the Womanthology second issue for... Um, I don't know if it's been announced yet, but I'm really excited about the story. Um, Joelle also comes from an animation background like me, so I had a lot of fun drawing the scenes that she wrote. I don't know how much I can give away, <laughs> so... But um, when it comes out, I hope you guys pick it up. I have some stuff in the works, but the thing that is probably furthest along are two stories for another anthology called Dead Roots, which is a zombie anthology, but the twist is it's being put together by a British editor, so all the, it's basically the zombie apocalypse in the UK. Um, and I did two stories for that, uh, one with an artist named Jack Tempest, which I think is the best artist name ever, and uh, <laughs> another by Eric Canete. Cool. Um, I'm working on a book for Arcana. That's pretty much all I can say. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> NDAs! It's only best if it's like top secret, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've actually just finished a book for Image. I finished it like a week before I came to San Diego. Oh my god, yeah. I can breathe. <laughs> um, my next two projects are small anthology books. Um, I've previously done work in an uh, anthology called The Gathering, which is pretty much made by the guys over at the Brian Michael Bendis boards. Um, I'm going to be in two more of those. I'm doing a western uh, written by Sterling Gates and an erotic story, <laughs> yes, uh, written by Karina Lawson. Um, I've worked with both of them previously and they want me back to do another story, so. Yeah. And I'm writing a young adult novel. I am uh, starting with five uh, partners, a new company going out for funding this summer. I'm in contract negotiations to write an animated movie. And oh, I wrote an issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that will be out next month. <laughs> One of the things about Womanthology is that we have a bunch, I don't know if we've got more than one slide of this. If we do, go ahead and click forward. We have so many interesting people involved in putting it all together, and you can see us there at conventions. This is something that's open to more participation and, you know, beyond just girls. I like to see boys do comics, too. So I hope you all think of yourselves as someone who can do them and can take advantage, in addition to taking a look at ours. So now at this point, see that microphone in the middle? If any of you have questions, you can make your way over there and send them our way. I've been trying to do a comic for like two years now, and I've worked with a couple male artists, and it just mm. hasn't worked out <laughs> for many reasons. But how do you find female artists? I mean, I find so many male ones at cons and things like that, but what's a good network to do that? Actually, there's a sign-up list on the Womanthology forum for yeah. artists who want to work on Womanthology, and I know a lot of writers who've gone to that list to look at artists and sort of poach them for personal projects. That's digitalwebbing.com, I believe, yeah. and then the Womanthology sub-forum on that site. So digital webbing. Okay. Gives you a big leg up if you're willing to pay them. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's another yeah. problem. That's the problem with male artists. Like, the problem with you know being an artist is that, yeah, sometimes you get writers that, obviously I've done a lot of work for free, but you know, obviously, not not everyone has enough time to work for free. So you can't, you know, it's sort of hard to blame someone for bailing out if you're not offering them any money. But then again, it's hard to be a writer when you don't have the money to pay an artist. So it's, I guess, more about coming together on a project that you're both really interested in. So you can sell plasma twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> When did each of you realize that you could do comics, that you wanted to do comics, and uh, decided to 
make the jump and, and do comics. <laughs> I drew some in high school, but my least favorite part of the process was like ruling out the pages. You know, it's like I'd get out the ruler, I'd draw one panel, it's like, ah, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really start doing a lot of comic stuff until I got Photoshop, and it was like, oh, I could just shift lines. And uh, now I actually, uh, I just started using Manga Studio, and they just have the panel color tool, and it's like, you've eliminated everything I hate about comics. <laughs> yeah, I've always just drawn comics. Um, I've always drawn stories, mostly what I really find interesting is stories in general and I just like drawing stories whether it be for animation or for comics so I'm one of those kids that didn't stop drawing mm. and I just kept going and I went oh wait I could have a career because I'm holding comics in my hand and someone must have drawn them so I could have this job right <laughs> so I went to art school and yeah been here ever since it's like the important thing to remember is it doesn't happen if you don't do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't just like sit there like, I should do that someday. It's like, that won't make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Like Gail told us a story um, at C2E2 where a woman approached her after a uh, panel once and told her that she's always wanted to draw. And one day she, her, she, on her birthday, she asked for like art supplies and her mother didn't give them to her, but gave them to her brothers instead because um, art was for men, not for women. <laughs> women were meant to tend to the home and take care of kids and that was just enough to break this poor woman's heart and never pick up her supplies again and really the most important advice Gail gives to um, people and it's really really important is just to do it mm -hmm. and just you know even if people tell you you can't because my parents told me I couldn't either so but you know I kept going because yeah. for one thing I this is my favorite thing to do and another thing I can't do anything else <laughs> Actually, I have felt that one of the biggest motivators, it has been in my life anyway, is I'll show them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always loved writing and I always wrote constantly and I, I got into theater so I wanted to be a playwright and then I had a guy try to kidnap me and I ended up in a comic book store and I wrote a lot of critique letters to them and then they hired me and I thought, great, I'll get to New York and I'll get into the New York theater scene and, and, and then I never quite completed that loop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking about Trina saying, oh, you know, I'll show them. I think I seriously got into comics during art school. Um, after college, I went to university to study art, and I ended up leaving because, you know, I was always interested in comics, and I sort of joined that style, and, you know, they were a fine arts institution, and they were like, comics aren't real art, like, you can't make a career oh, out yeah. of that. So I was like, fine, and I left and just started drawing comics, so... <laughs> Yeah, it was great, great motivator. <laughs> yeah, I've we'll actually been doing uh, web comics for a while, but I knew I really wanted to write comics more seriously when I took a screenplay I'd written and adapted it into a comic miniseries, and I liked the comic miniseries better than the original screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I, I had said earlier that I had not drawn in a long time, um, but after doing Womanthology, I picked up a pencil again and started using brush and ink. And despite the fact that m my lines are shaky and, <laughs> and the drawings that I do are pretty simplified, I still keep on putting out uh, one page comic after one page comic after one page comic. And, Pretty soon I'll get comfortable enough to do something more than one page. <laughs> That's what I like about like things like this is like you know because I, I work as an animator and I do the web comic on the side and it's like I'm just drawing like ten hours a day and it's just like ah it never ends and so you get like kind of sick of it but then you come to something like this and you're seeing like everybody's work and it's like I'm excited about like I love comics again I just want to go home and draw and you know gotta wait five days to get back to my Cintiq. <laughs> I must admit though like I'm totally different when I finished this image book like I hadn't done any personal work for for months and like it was three a.m. and I just handed in the last page. And I'm like, I finished this comic. Now I can draw something else. And I'm just gonna like, draw something else right away. And no. stop. Yeah, that's been me these last few weeks of like just buried in freelance. And I finally had some time going like, I'm gonna draw something for me. <laughs> what am I gonna draw? I'm gonna draw Batgirl. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, Hi. Hi. So uh, I found out about this project actually on Tumblr. Uh, um, this was dcwomankickingass.com. Yes. Uh, yep. <laughs> so I was, but many of the things that I found in that Tumblr actually are, are some posts that she um, reblogs that are, well, Sometimes hilarious, but most of the time really sad about... Yeah. Uh, My drawing of Superman in a bikini was on there. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. But uh, kind of about that, um, 
there, she posts many uh, replies and reblogs of uh, men and male, male creators sometimes that are um, like shutting out w not only female creators but readers that go, um, w well, why are you um, complaining when you have Gail Simone or why are you complaining in yeah. sex sells or yeah. Barbara Gordon is the only bad girl who has shut up or something like that. <laughs> I call well, that the on. exception that proves the rule. Yeah. It's yeah. like just the fact that it's like, you know, you have to be like, oh, we've got Gail Simone, she's very special, is that, you know, she's so rare that, you know, it's like they're making a big deal out of. Yeah. I mean, like, she's super talented, like, don't get me wrong, but it's like, just that you have to be like, no, look, we're hiding behind Gail Simone's skirts. It's the tone no, of yeah, I agree, of course. Whole, yeah. 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 I, I agree wholeheartedly, and, be, and precisely because of that, why, what is a message that would, you would give to um, not only female creators, but female readers who uh, are sometimes, um, that's the only environment they see, because I'm, I'm really lucky, because my friends actually, female and male, they read comics and we're all like a happy family. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> but many aren't, and I, I know people that aren't on the internet mostly, <laughs> not the great internet community. <laughs> yeah. And so what message would you give to girls, well, guys too, but girls, not only creators, but readers? Well, I was gonna say that like, if you're really interested in letting publishers know like what you wanna read, um, just buy the books that you want to support, like, you know, if you find a superhero comic that is being especially sexist or, you know, the guy writing the book has said something that you strongly disagreed with, like, you know, talk with your wallet and buy something else, I think is the biggest thing. <laughs> or Tweet make it, it, post it, spread it. If you like something and you think somebody's done something well, spread the news. Yeah. Tell everyone you can. Spread it far and wide. Let the publishers know you like that one and you'd like to see more. And yeah. go make more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Let's the add to it. Yeah. And the internet is like this big, giant, open forum. And um, I feel like people who, who work in publishing and in, you know, not to mention other media, get a little bit blindsided by how much feedback that they get. Mm. And so they need to, at some at some point they are learning not to ignore all the, not to just, you know, ignore the bad feedback and just look at the good feedback. But um, if, if the bad feedback is, you know, constantly overwhelming, if there's like a lot of people saying, hey, we don't like this or this is sexist, we disagree with this, that's when, you know, they'll change their point of view. So, yeah, spreading it far and wide, if you like something or if you don't like something, getting your friends in on the deal, you know, just letting people know, especially with places like Tumblr, yeah. which has reblogs and likes and things like that, and information can be spread so easily these days. For instance, I went to see Brave on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Yes. I loved Brave, in part because Brave is a story of a girl being a girl, having girl-like problems, who solves those girl-like problems without the boy showing up yeah. to have to save her. <laughs> yeah. So please go see Brave. Yes. Um, I'd like to say one thing that a lot of you may not agree with me because a lot of you are into mainstream comics. I'd say forget about mainstream comics. <laughs> you know, forget about the New 52. They don't care. They don't care about us. They don't care about you. They have a constantly revolving market of young males. Forget about them. Don't get yourself so upset that there's only one woman or two women creators in the New 52. Look at graphic novels. You know, I would even say forget about comic book stores. Go to bookstores. Go to the graphic novel section. Go online. You're Go That's online. Like, you know, go, there's go so much, the, you know, a web comic Kickstarter. <laughs> there's so much good stuff out there. Go there. And if you do find retailers that are really supportive of their female customers, because I know that's a complaint that I hear a lot, that there are women who go into comic book stores and they just feel like they aren't treated the same way that the male customers are. If you find a retailer that treats you like a human being and a paying customer and stuff, support them. Because, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot of comic book stores have been suffering the past few years. So yes. support the ones who are doing it right. Yes. Yeah. I think it's Thanks. important. Uh, I was just going to say, like, when, like, don't let the people who tell you, like, oh, we've heard that argument already, like, we're done with that now like don't don't let them like stop you from because it's like you know when when something comes up and people are like oh I don't really like that and they you know calmly voice why and then people are like you know like oh we, we understand your point and then the next month it happens again and you say like hey I still don't like this and they're like oh we heard that already like you, you don't need to talk about that anymore it's like it's still a problem that's obviously still happening like don't don't let people who are like 
Like, like Catwoman, the new 52? Yeah. Oh, you oh, voiced God. yourself. Like, like, my childhood was crying. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, that they did switch uh, Anna Chetty on to Catwoman, so maybe enough people yes. were talking. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Well, I was going to say, things have changed dramatically because I've been coming to this show since I did it for one day in 1981. And for the first about 10 years, I had a private restroom in the convention center. <laughs> <laughs> but also the question I heard the most often are, who are you here with? And now the question I get the most often is, what do you like? What are you reading? Yeah. What would you recommend? And so the world has changed dramatically. But the other thing I want to watch out for when I join into groups like Womanthology or anything like that, the thing I like to watch out for is there's not one story girls like because there's not just one girl despite what you see in the Justice League. <laughs> you know? So more voices are available now via comics done online or small press. The fact that no one, there used to be a barrier to entry to print in that if you couldn't find a way to make the color files, you couldn't make your own comics. Well, now you don't even need the printing plates. Anyone can do something in comics that shows their voice and their story, and ideally, all of us should not be liking the same story, should not be representing the same exact character, because women is bigger than one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, it's like whenever people, you know, whenever somebody's like, oh, I like this thing, and then someone else is like, I don't like it, and then somebody's like, oh, you women can never make up your minds. It's like, well, we're not a hive mind. I mean, we're not the Borg. <laughs> I mean, it's not like people can look at this panel and be like, you guys are all the same because you're all women. We're clearly not. <laughs> Thank you, and thanks again for the super money in a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. I should make a print of that. <laughs> Hi, um, this question actually goes with that last one. Um, as women who've broken into the professional sphere, and I know as you've said... Uh, Would you lift the microphone up? Sorry. We're missing part of your voice. Okay, is this better? Yeah. Okay, as women who have broken into the professional sphere, sphere and um, looking back, would you give maybe your younger selves any advice um, as two young women now who want to break into the professional sphere, whether it be comics or video games or illustration, but still find it that it's still kind of like very male dominated? I was pretty lucky in that, like, I don't think I've ever had a career problem that, you know, they were like, oh, you were held back because you were a girl, like, but, you know, to, to young creators in general, it's like, sleep and eat, because, you know, you think you're like, I don't have time, I gotta just keep working, it's like, you do things to your mind that when you start sleeping and eating again and looking back, it's like, it wasn't worth it, just sleep and eat, and you will be amazed. <laughs> Um, I would tell myself to draw more and study harder because um, you really have to be an artist. You really have to study the hell out of your craft. And you, especially in animation, they really demand that you have a wide set of skills and be able to draw in a wide variety of styles. So um, I, so really, it, um, being in, working in animation and comics, it can be very, very difficult, especially if like, you get something and you're like, ah, oh, that's really hard to draw. I can't really draw that. But you have to do it anyway, because you're getting paid for this. <laughs> so just work hard. Um, Constantly practice, do life drawing, copy the things you like, draw your, draw your hands, draw other people's hands, sit in the corner in the coffee shop and stare at people and see how they're standing. You may look like a creepster, but you're learning. <laughs> the, the hardest and most tedious things to draw are probably the ones you're going to learn the most from. It's kind of like when you're at the gym and like the heaviest thing to lift is probably going to do the yeah. best you know, for your body. <laughs> the best advice I could give to any artist, and this is like something that I should have told myself years ago, don't buy that gaming console. <laughs> <laughs> you will not get any work done. You'll miss your deadlines. It'll be awful. <laughs> and I would say for anyone who wants to work in a professional sphere, especially entertainment related, learn how to network. If you're someone who's shy and is like, because like me, I tend to be nervous to go up to talk to editors at conventions like this, but you know, it's, they're not going to like punch you in the face or anything. <laughs> they might just say not a good time and then you say okay and slip them a card or something, but just be able to get up the nerve to actually talk to people who can make your career if you can. And maybe right now is not a good time, but maybe next con mm -hmm. is a good yeah. time. <laughs> and the more you practice writing, drawing, lettering, coloring, the better and better you're going to get. And don't be afraid to be bad, because the things you try that are one step beyond what you can actually do are the things that stretch you and strengthen you so that next time you can try it and do it. Oh, I talk to so many people who say they're like afraid to draw in their sketchbooks because they'll mess it up, and they're like, oh, I can't do the pit. It's like, man, you have to get out 
so many bad drawings before you're going to make some good ones. Buy cheaper <laughs> sketchbooks and you won't be afraid. Or don't use a sketchbook. Draw on scratch paper. Draw on a napkin. Paper. Save the environment. Just draw. We used to pull Watchtower Bibles out of the recycling bin and like rebind them with butcher paper and stuff. Other stuff we pulled out of the recycling bin. Yeah. <laughs> like Katie draws on old scripts and stuff. Like she never draws on like fresh paper. She's always, it's always on the back of something. And, and so I get a drawing from her. I'm like, Katie, what's this? And she's like, oh, wait, you can't have that. <laughs> um, thank you, ladies, very much. It's very inspirational to see you all up there. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks. You. Ladies, girls, gals, do you realize how often you call yourself guys? I mean, just oh, go see, back. The guys has no this. gender. <laughs> no, no. I mean, the group. You're, you're going both ways on this. That you, you know, want to be the gals, the woman mythology, and yet a number of times, just two seconds ago, you said, "You guys, you guys." Real success will be made when I'm listening to a panel like this. And you say you girls. Okay, you we'll start saying we estrogen women. Okay, that, that's all. But now you know. Here's another side of the issue. Someone at the beginning said two X chromosomes. That's a real topic today for some people. I, I was just, you know, so like, just you know, I, I'm looking forward to your woman anthology. I think you're doing a great job. Just girls. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I think our Briefly, I've got a couple of notations here. Uh, the ladies from Womanthology will be signing tomorrow at the IDW booth, booth 2643 under the big rotating IDW. There's a Womanthology table over in Artist Alley at location BB9 and 10 that has a rotating roster of people available there. Do we actually have the schedule posted at the table, or is it just come, uh, come uh, see I who you see? Behind the table. Um, just come uh, by and see who's there. Yeah. I'll be there uh, 11.30 to 1.30 on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> yeah, also some of us have merchandise like of our own prints and of our own comics, so please come take a look. <laughs> And you can find Jean Kang also at Girls Drawing Girls, booth 5628, yes. Friday and Saturday for merchandise and portfolio reviews. You can find Trina on Friday at the Comics Art Conference from 12 to 1.30, the No Straight Lines LBGT panel from 2 to 3, the Gay Comics Anniversary panel on Saturday, and she's signing at the Fanographics table on Friday from 3.30 to 5.30. Wow, Ooh. thank you. If you'd like some, I if you'd you like for some ideas for how to get starting on a project of your own or how to get over writer's block or artist blank, I've got a panel Sunday at 1 p.m. that's tailored made for you. That's in room four. Uh, Jolene Hauser is doing a signing at Arcana 2415 on Actually, Saturday from three to... Oh, what? Oh. You got canceled. Oh. It got canceled? No! Jolene's signing at our table. <laughs> so just, yeah. stalk, so just feel free to stalk Jolene during the convention and ask her about Buy it. Buy something. I need But of course it. she can't tell you. <laughs> Now, I heard from some of you. Is there anybody else have some place where we can find you that you need to tell these people? Oh. I think I'm going to be wandering around dressed like the comedian on Saturday, so you can keep an eye out for that. <laughs> can I say, Mato and I are going to be at the Deviant Art booth tomorrow, which is right next to Womanthology, so we'll sort of be right back and forth. And I think we're going to go down there right now, too, um, to the table after this panel. So. And I'll be at the Woman Womanthology table on Sunday from what time to what time? On Sunday? I don't know your time's on that. Okay, but I'll be there on Sunday. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all for coming here and supporting us. Go out and make comics. Yeah.